What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and a little while ago the musical genius Dave Grohl put out a video on YouTube called Play and it was about the virtues of mastering an instrument. Now in that video there's a music video where Dave Grohl plays every single instrument, there's actually seven instruments in that song and on camera on the final video, it looks like a super group of seven Daves, all playing simultaneously. So I was chatting with a friend, another Grohl fan who owns a recording studio, and we got thinking whether we could do something similar. I mean, how hard can it be? Here's a little preview. <laughs> Just one bit of quick housekeeping before I dive in. These videos are powered by my Patreon backers. It's a non-profit thing. The idea is with the funds from Patreon, I buy gear and then I give it away to you after I've reviewed it. It's a really elegant way of improving my content, which I hope is okay already. And at the same time, you get the potential to win some gear. So really it's win-win. Details in the description box below. Of course, that full video is linked in the description box below. And needless to say, this was a taxing project. And in this video, I'm gonna go through all of the challenges I faced throughout the filming and then grading and editing process. Let's do it. Of course, special thanks to my good friend Ben, who is the owner of Axe and Trap Studios, for indulging in this largely pointless passion project. But it was a good excuse to show off the amazing space they have and facilities. So many thanks to them and yeah, the link below. Check them out. It was a full day of filming and the key was to nail the composite shot, the wide one, with Ben playing each instrument. This was achieved, of course, by filming each performance separately whilst not moving the camera. I also had to light each area separately whilst trying to not move anything in the room. Also, as each one was to be the main recorded audio for the music video, there was massive pressure on Ben to perform and basically nail each performance perfectly. Here you can see each shot with the light in a different position each time. I used just a single light, top-down style on full power because I wanted to create as much contrast as possible in camera so that when it came to grading, I could achieve a similar kind of look to the Grohl video quite naturally. I shot the whole video on my Sony a7S III, this angle with the Canon 16-35 f4 IS adapted. It's a crazy sharp lens. I used S-Log3 for maximum flexibility, I really wanted to be able to manipulate the contrast, so this was by far the best option. Once we'd finished all the angles for this composite shot, I moved on to alternate angles. I simply did a load of shots on a gimbal using the Sony 20mm f1.8, whilst Ben played a few more takes. I actually lowered the power of the main light a little and then added a small Lupo kickass panel behind the subject for a bit of backlighting goodness. And that was it for filming. Sounds easy, right? Well you'd be wrong because there were there were challenges the continuity of the angles for the composite shot was really tricky obviously i had to light everything separately and when you have to move a large light there's so much that you could knock like guitar pedals mic stands cables even cables we had to try and avoid and try and keep in the same place in between takes when it comes to grading usually if i know that i'm going to be grading for black and white i like to use a lookup table that's specifically designed for black and white that way i know that it will map the contrast in a really pleasing way and i can just use the color curves to fine tune it however in this case i did my usual thing of just Adding a good lookup table, in this case it was the Phantom Lutz neutral lookup table, just to gauge how much contrast I had actually created with the lighting setup. I then just tried pulling the saturation down and boom! That was the exact look I was looking for. Really clean, nice contrast and lovely highlight roll off. There was no need to do anything else. The only other thing I did do was just pull the shadows down just a touch 
after the lookup table in our chain of plugins. And the reason for that is because the Phantom LUTs, faithful to the way that array color science works, it will only drop the shadows down to around 3% and then they won't go any further. So if you want, if you want true black, like 0%, you have to add uh, some sort of correction after the lookup table. Correct me if I'm wrong, if it's 3% um, for Ari, can't remember, it's something like that. In terms of editing challenges, well, there, there were some. The first job, of course, is to sync our clips with the audio. Usually when I'm editing a music video, I'm dealing with mime takes, you know, where m musicians will mime along to some music and I've got scratch audio on every clip. That way, usually all you need to do is select all your clips, plus the music track, right click and select new multicam clip and Final Cut does the hard work for you. But in this case, each clip was a recorded performance. So the only scratch audio I had to deal with was whatever was happening in the room. The drums by far are the easiest to sync up because you know you can see they're very percussive, you can see where the beats are. After that, I got a bit more tricky. In particular, the synth track was really tricky because there are less cues as to where how to sync them. Anticipating this, I had Ben nod his head and tap along, and that gave me a few a few clues. The wide angle shot with the seven Bens playing is actually a seven layer composite, and that was because there was lots of masking needed so that everything blended in and it looked natural enough and it looked similar to the Grohl video. Well, sort of anyway, Dave's is definitely lower contrast, but a really similar concept, particularly with the top-down lighting. Here you can see how I did the masking as I turn the masking on on each layer. It's basically just a series of overlapping ovals. In the end, I think we did a really decent job of not moving anything because there's nothing obvious between the different takes that would give this away. I could have included more of the room, more of the background, but I really wanted this to be a super contrasty, moody looking shot. And with seven 4K 10-bit clips layered up, each with individual grading and masking and all the other things that I did, Final Cut did start to protest. Luckily, there are loads of things you can do to keep Final Cut running really fast, and I actually made a video called How to Get Final Cut Running Faster. It's... and... Eventually, I was able to sync up the wide shot with all of the other gimbal shots and I made it into a multicam clip. I cut it up and that's that. I have also done a video about my multicam workflow, which I think you're going to find really helpful. And again, and obviously I didn't just chop up the clips and then consider it done. I also did lots of what I call polish and that's just adding interest in any way that I can. First thing I did was to add this sort of flicker effect and I did it manually. I just went in and chopped out just a few frames here and there and it gives this cool glitchy flicker look. Next I broke out one of my favorite transition plugins which is M Transition Scrub. It just adds to the feeling of chaos. It really messes with the timing and I just love the effect. Do check out my review, it's an absolutely stellar plugin. One thing that could easily go unnoticed is the fact that I added some light leaks. I used them really sparingly and I had them on maybe 1% intensity to keep them nice and subtle. The Dave Grohl video had lots of split screen use. Now this is not something that I like to overuse personally, but I did want to give a nod to it, so I used it just once and I used the amazing Slice Pop plugin which I reviewed recently. That review is also linked below it's a belter. So there you go, do watch the full video, it's linked below. I just hope you found this interesting. I wanna hear from you. Did you, did you like it? Did you, was there anything you'd do differently? Did you pick up any tips and tricks? As always, I'm hoping we can load up the comments section with knowledge and it becomes a kind of treasure trove of tips because that's what this channel is all about. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.